difference between love and being grateful? Being grateful is definitely a, in the direction of love. But at the same time, love involves much more of a active connotation it has. I can be grateful to someone, but the grati gratitude is expressed in some ways. And often love is seen through actions. So they are, it's generally you would say if there's love, there will also be gratitude. Mm -hmm. so, but you know, suppose a, we might be grateful to our employer that they have given a good job. But that doesn't mean we fall in love with our employer, is it? Unless, of course, you want to marry and become wealthy. <laughs> That's a different thing. <laughs> so, they are similar, but some difference. So, for a neophyte, um, initially what they have to develop is being grateful to Krishna. Of course, yes, definitely. That's a good point. There are four levels. There is fear, desire, duty and love in approaching God. And when we see... I mean, at the level of duty, generally it's based on gratitude. At the level of desire, oh, I'll worship God so that God will give this to me. But at the level of duty, God has already done so much for me. The least that I can do is, let me visit his temple and offer my respects and prayers to him. So there is gratitude already there at that level of duty. So my second question is probably, so you said there's a funnel diagram with karma and bhakti. Hmm. So can someone follow bhakti without following dharma? Generally, no. Uh, gen generally, devotional behavior includes ethical behavior. So, dharma, if you can say ethics or law. So, devotional behavior includes ethical behavior. Now, in some exceptional situations, when, say, the law of the land is opposed to devotion, then at that time, say, Sanadhan Goswami, for example, at a time when there was Islamic rule in India, he was imprisoned for his devotion. And he said... He told, he told, to get out of the prison, he told the prisoner that, you know, I want to go on a religious tour. And he said, I want to go to Mecca. Now, he wanted to go to Kashi to meet Mahaprabhu. But now, at that time, he had to tell something. So, in exceptional situations, it may be required. But generally, devotional behavior includes ethical behavior. And my final question is, Prabhuji, so the final point you said, uh, being open, so, attached to Krishna and his services, but not to have plans. Not, not, I'm not saying not to have plans. It is a sign of intelligence to have plans. It is, anything that we take seriously, we make plans about it. So, when we, if we are doing something serious, like for example, if I'm giving a class. Now, if I take the class seriously, I'll plan the class. But after planning the class, if I find that the audience is very different from what I expected. Then I may have to change. I may have planned a very good class, but it's a very good class for a different level of audience. And the audience behavior for me is different. Then I have to be ready to change the class. So making plans is good. It shows our seriousness to Krishna. But what I said is don't be attached to the plans. Okay, if this is not work, if reality is not working out the way according to my plan, then what happens is our plan should be like a tool for us to better navigate reality. But sometimes, when reality is very different, then our plan can become like a wall between us and reality. It prevents us from dealing with reality as it is. So that is when, okay, put aside my plan, let's deal with the situation as it is. So, for example, if I take my two-year-old son to a daughter, I may not uh, do proper obeisance, etc., etc., but at the same time, if I show love and care uh, to Krishna, at the same time, show my son that this is how things are right, Krishna will accept it. And Krishna is not bound by the rules and regulations, but he is really looking to that pure love and how yes. grateful we are, correct? Yes, so Krishna is not bound by pure love, but by, by rules and regulations. At the same time, Bhakti is about more than rules and regulations, not less. See, in general, if you are going for a serious business meeting, now, most people, they go into a business meeting, they are not going to go in Bermuda shorts. Isn't it? Now, you could say that, oh, you know, I am the same competent professional, whether I am in Bermuda shorts or I am in a, uh, a suit. But if you are taking the occasion seriously, then you will dress properly for the occasion. 
isn't it? So now in an exceptional situation, if some emergency comes up and somebody is not able to dress properly, still they can be in the meeting and they can do the job. That's okay. But in general, there is contextual appropriateness. So yes, Krishna is not going to punish us just because we don't follow a particular um, minute rule. But that is, should not become our license for just neglecting and uh, downplaying rules. It is often following certain rules is, is a way we also express respect and even affection to some extent. Sometimes in affection, we may go beyond rules. But say, we meet someone, we greet them politely. Say, we say, Hare Krishna, hello, how are you? And, and we may know that person very well, but that basic politeness is also an expression of respect. So, bhakti is about more than rules, not less than rules. And sometimes that more can mean that the rules are no longer required. Our rules may not be necessarily followed certain times. But it is not that they are just completely neglected all the time. Okay. Thank you very much. Granthraj Srimad Bhagavatam ki. Srila Prabhupad ki. Gaur Bhakta Vrind ki. Itai Gaur Primanande.